What exactly happened between Sansa Stark and Sandor Clegane in the books? After the execution of Sansa's father, Lord Eddard Stark. Despite not being a knight himself, Sandor takes Barristan Selmy's position after his dismissal. Despite his rough demeanor, he is frequently tasked with keeping an eye on Sansa in the capacity. He even makes an effort to shield her from Joffrey. Sansa Stark and Sandor Clegane, also known as the Hound, crossed paths in the very first season of HBO's Game of Thrones. So did they in George R. R. Martin's The Song of Ice and Fire. In Game of Thrones, the first book, where Sansa and Sandor initially met, King Joffrey and Sansa are engaged, and Sandor serves as Joffrey's bodyguard. He tells her the tale of his brother pushing his face into the fire, leaving a burn scar on his face. He chose to tell Sansa this in order to essentially demonstrate to her that their surroundings are perilous and that the tales she has read about charming knights and princes aren't always what they seem. King Joffrey orders sadistic tendencies. Sandor was the one who cleaned the blood off Sansa's lips after Joffrey gave Esser Marin Trant order to slap her for backtalk. In the second book, Clash of Kings, Sandor is the only one who doesn't mistreat Sansa despite Joffrey's orders to do so. He achieves this by tactically defending her. When Joffrey made Esser Dantos his king's guard drink till he pass out on his name day, Sansa lies and claims that it's unlucky to kill someone on your name day. Sandor also supports her claims. When Sansa is being abused by Marin Trant in front of the lords and ladies, Tyrion Lannister, Bronn, and Timot intervene to stop the abuse before it becomes worse. After Esser Marin Trant tears off her clothing, Sandor covers her with his white cloak. In one scene, a drunk Sandor stops Sansa and asks her to sing to him about knights and pretty maidens because he still thinks of her as a little bird. Sansa responds that she will gladly sing to him. Sansa still has trust in him despite his violent treatment of her throughout the encounter since he is gentler and shields her from Esser Boros Blunt. Following Marcella Baratheon's departure, there is a riot in King's Landing. When Sansa finds herself in a dangerous scenario when a group of men are about to rape and maybe kill her, Sandor intervenes to stop them and save Sansa. Fearful of fire, Sandor leaves the Blackwater battleground and searches for Sansa during the conflict. Sansa begs the mother to both calm Sandor's fury and save him during the fight. After returning to her room, Sansa runs into an inebriated Sandor. After telling her that he was leaving King's Landing and promising to keep her safe, Sansa chooses to stay, but Sandor forgets his cloak. Sansa ties the crimson cloak. In the future chapters of Sansa's Pa, she talks about a kiss that happened that night, but the thing is there was never a kiss. When she is forced to marry Tyrion Lannister, Sansa wishes Sandor was here with her and that she still had his bleeding cloak, which she stored in a chest with her summer garments. In fact, Sansa claims Tyrion is more repulsive than the Hound. Sansa flees from King Joffrey Baratheon's deathbed with the aid of Petter Bellish and Esser Dantos, whom Sansa rescued from certain death. Sansa is transferred to her aunt Lisa Aaron's home in the Airy. Bodyguard Esser Lothor Brune, who works for Littlefinger, saves Sansa from being sexually assaulted by Lisa's singer Marillion once more. For a while, she thought it was Sandor, not Lothar, who had saved her. In one section of the narrative, Sansa becomes friends with an elderly blind dog, sleeps by a fireplace, and dreams of being married to Tyrion. In the dream, she is in her bridal bed, but Tyrion appears as a tall, bearded man who asks her to sing to him. The scarred face man obviously resembles Sandor. In this particular moment, it shows Sansa's feelings towards Sandor Clegane to the point where she even dreams of marrying him. When Robert Aaron, whom she had given the nickname of Sweet Robin, planted a kiss on her mouth in Feast of Crows, where she had assumed the identity of Elaine Stone, she was reminded of Sandor doing the same. As the boy's lips touched her own, she found herself thinking of another kiss. She could still remember how it felt when his cruel mouth pressed down on her own. He had come to Sansa in darkness as green fire filled the sky. He took a song and a kiss and left me nothing but a bloody cloak. In the book, it's unclear where Sandor Clegane is or even if he's still alive. In the fourth book, A Feast for Crows, 
Brienne of Tarth and her friends have arrived on the quiet isle. They are walking uphill past a lichyard on their way, where she saw a brother larger than her struggling to dig Brother Clement's grave. This leads to the theory that he is the grave digger. In contrast to the television show, Sansa remains in the airy and maintains her new identity as Elaine Stone. If Sandor is still alive in the book, I think they will cross paths again because Sansa is obsessed with him and even dreams of having him as her spouse. In conclusion, Sansa Stark and Sandor Clegane share a complex relationship marked by moments of unexpected kindness and protection from Sandor. Amidst the brutality of King's Landing, Sansa's memories and dreams of Sandor reveal a deep emotional impact, suggesting unresolved feelings and a significant bond. While Sandor's fate remains uncertain, the possibility of their paths crossing again lingers, underscoring Sansa's lingering obsession and the potential for future interactions in the series. That was it for the video. Thank you for watching.